Hello, my name is John Kugler. I'm an internist here at Stanford, and today we're going to be talking about perioperative hypertension management. I know you guys are consuming a lot of information, and my goal is to give you just a few easy tips that are going to help your patients in the perioperative period to make sure their blood pressure stays under control. So first things first, let's talk about the medicines that you definitely want to have the patient continue to take, including the morning of their surgery. Okay? And so the most important ones that I want you to remember are going to be their beta blockers. All right, so this is the metoprolols, the atenolols. Um, I want you guys, if it ends in alol, because um, there are a number of them, think that's a beta blocker, and we're going to continue it. Um, we're going to do it before surgery, and you're going to continue it in the perioperative period. Okay? If the patient is becoming hypotensive, uh, if they're becoming bradycardic, um, you can certainly hold the medication, but that's a great time to go ahead and get a consultant to come ahead and see, go ahead and see the patient um, if they're having problems tolerating that medication. <clears throat> the other medicine that you really don't want to stop is going to be clonidine. Um, not a lot of patients are necessarily on clonidine. It's not a very, very common blood pressure medication any longer. Um, but remember, as an alpha-2 agonist, this medication can have some pretty serious uh, rebound hypertension. And so you could really make your patient worse if you stop the clonidine. So just go ahead and continue it. Again, take it the morning of and continue it in the perioperative period. <clears throat> For this medication specifically, if they're on pills and, and post-op they can no longer take pills, this does come in a patch, and so you can switch them uh, one for one straight over to the patch if they're not able to take pills. Now let's talk about some of the medications that can actually be bad for your patient in the perioperative period. The number one I want to talk about are going to be ACE inhibitors and, and ARBs. All right. So your ACE inhibitors are going to be your lisinoprils, um, your enalapril. So if it ends in pril, think ACE, okay? And then your ARBs are going to be your, your ARTANs, right, like Losartan, for example. Um, so again, when you're seeing these medications, these are great blood pressure medications. They're very, very common. So many of your patients are going to be on these medications. Um, the challenge is, if they take them the morning of surgery, um, you can see some perioperative hypotension. And very, very frequently, we see an increase in the creatinine in the postoperative period. So usually, you can save your patient a big headache and just go ahead and stop these. Um, the one caveat to that for very minor surgical procedures where they will not be admitted to the hospital, totally outpatient, um, these are going to be your, your eye surgeries, um, again, minor procedures where there's very little risk of blood loss. Um, it would be totally fine to continue these. But for all of your hospitalized patients, I would very seriously consider stopping these medications. The other ones are going to be your diuretics. The diuretics that you should know about are going to be your loop diuretics and your thiazides. So your loop diuretics are going to be <coughs> your furosemides, your torsemides, uh, your bumetanides. So again, if it ends in that, it's a loop diuretic. And in general, it is a good idea to hold these the morning of surgery. Don't give these the morning of surgery. Remember, your loop diuretics cause a lot of fluid shifts. So if the patient's going to have a big surgery where they might be losing fluid, might be losing blood, hold the loop diuretic. Your thiazides, it's not as straightforward. So this is going to be your HCTZ, your hydrochlorothiazide, your chlorthalidone. Um, these medications um, don't cause nearly as much fluid loss. Um, and this is really one where it's a toss-up. If you wanted to give, keep it uh, going the morning of surgery, it's reasonable to do so. Though to be honest with you, most people just go ahead and hold it. It's not going to have a big effect on the blood pressure either way. And so most of us will just hold it. The final question is, when do you restart some of these medications that you have held? Okay? And so this is, again, a little bit more straightforward. The next post-op day one, day after surgery, you see the blood pressure start climbing, go ahead and give these, give these medications right back, okay? Most importantly, you really want to be careful, especially holding the loop diuretics in patients, for example, who have pre-existing renal dysfunction or cardiac dysfunction. They will likely start to accumulate fluid. So once you see the blood pressure start going up, if you see them start developing edema, this is when you really want to restart that loop diuretic as soon as possible. There are a number of other blood pressure medications, for example, <clears throat> calcium channel blockers, that are totally fine. Um, they're kind of neutral. Um, and most of us would recommend just continuing those so you don't have someone whose surgery gets canceled because you told them to stop all of their blood pressure medications. And now the anesthesiologist sees the patient and they say, oh, his blood pressure is too high or her blood pressure is too high. We don't need to stop the surgery. 
So if they're on a calcium channel blocker, just go ahead and continue that medication. Um, and that'll assure you that they, they won't have their surgery canceled. I think if you follow these simple rules, keep the beta blockers going, and stop your ACEs and ARBs and your loop diuretics, I think you're going to end up having a much more successful intern year.